Announced in October 2016, the HP NV 27-inch 4K display has been in short supply since its release in December 2016. I was able to get my hands on one recently and spend a few weeks with this budget-friendly display. The unit is nicely specced. It's a 27-inch IPS panel carrying a resolution of 3840 by 2160 runs at 60 Hz and supports AMD FreeSync. It claims a 1300 to 1 contrast ratio and a brightness of 350 nits. HP also claims 100% of sRGB color accuracy. They spec the unit with a typical response time of 5 milliseconds. It has a 178 degree field of vision and offers a low blue viewing mode for nighttime viewing. It also allows for VESA mounting via an included adapter. It has four inputs, one each HDMI 1.4 and HDMI 2.0, DisplayPort 1.2, and USB Type-C. The USB Type-C offers 60 watts of charging power. The spec sheet doesn't call out video input via the USB Type-C, but the panel itself does list it as a video input on the on-screen display. I didn't have a source to test this feature. I will also note that there are some discrepancies between the specs published on the HP website and the full data sheet linked from the HP NV27 product page. Installation is easy. First step is to screw the base into the mounting arm. From there, you press the arm into the back of the panel. One thing I don't like about the HP NV27 is that the stand is only secured via a spring-loaded button. There isn't a loud click to let you know it's in place, and you can accidentally press the button when lifting the panel by the stand. The inputs plug in perpendicular to the back of the panel rather than up from the bottom. I much prefer this as it's easier to see the ports and change connections. This is especially important if you're going to be plugging and unplugging a USB Type-C cable to connect a notebook. The stand doesn't offer any height adjustments nor any pivot. It does offer tilt to 5 degrees backwards and 25 degrees forwards. There is no rotation outside of rotating the entire base. The stand offers VESA wall mounting via the included adapter, which is kind of bulky and clunky. It adds a couple of inches of depth to the stand and muddies up, which is otherwise a very sleek styling. This was an obvious trade-off that HP made to keep the base unit as sleek as possible and only hamper the profile for those who choose to go with an arm or stand mounting. The panel sits a bit too low for my height and desk configuration, but your mileage may vary. Without any height adjustment, you may need to look at some sort of pedestal or deploying the VESA mounting system. The stand mounting, its lack of adjustability, and the VESA solution are my one solid gripe about the HP NV27. Once you get the display configured, these shouldn't give you any issues, but they may cause some frustrations with the initial setup. The HP NV27 has a nice sleek profile with high-end styling. This is enabled by the massive brick that is used to power the unit. While not too cumbersome for a single unit, you might be searching for floor space in an iFinity or surround setup. Like most modern displays, the HP Envy sports a thin physical bezel on three sides, which HP calls a quote, micro edge design. However, when turned on, there's a more noticeable border between the screen edge and the actual edge of the display. HP calls its matte anti-glare coating a quote, advanced haze panel. I found it to be quite effective at reducing glare in my brightly lit home office with large windows. The buttons for the on-screen display and power are on the back of the unit on the right-hand side. I'm used to either the front-mounted buttons of Dell panels or the joystick mounted to the bottom of LG panels. The back-mounted buttons took a bit for me to get used to and sometimes I had trouble finding the correct button while flying blind. The on-screen display shows which inputs have a source and the blue one marks the active source. It provides a few more details about active features such as auto switching and details on the input signal. The panel has a feature to warn you if you aren't using an HP cable. This warning may pop up even with an HP cable in use, but luckily the warning can be turned off. The screen exhibits a good image when viewed straight on as well as through a skew angles from the top, bottom, left, and right. I tested the panel with a Spider 5 Elite Plus. We'll walk through those results now. You can note the rating that the Spider software gave each test parameter. For example, the color gamut tested at 100% of sRGB right along with the spec. Spider rates this at a 5 of 5. The screen has a gamma of 2.3. At 100% brightness, the screen measures 316 nits against the rating of 350. 
The following spider tests were completed with brightness set at 55%, which is about 180 nits. The screen measured contrast ratio at 25% and above is 800 to 1. The three screen presets of warm, neutral, and cool correlate to color temps of 5100, 6800, and 9500 degrees Kelvin. Measuring luminance uniformity, the screen has a hot spot in the center, with the other eight areas having variations between 6 and 14%. These results are fairly consistent between 50% and 100% brightness, with the results improving slightly as the brightness increases. The darkest corners are consistently the upper right and the lower left. Here we see the color uniformity. The best performance is at 50% brightness. As brightness increases, the upper left and lower right corners show the greatest variance. Here is the full color accuracy panel. The average delta E is 2.47 with the greatest variance with 1F blue and 5F green. Running the HP NV27 with a recommended brightness of 55% produces excellent results with Spider giving it 4.5 out of 5 puck rating. The one weak spot is the luminance uniformity. I didn't notice anything in my usage as the difference between the min and the max was only 5 nits at the recommended brightness. Add to the strong performance, the 4K resolution, the 163 pixels per inch, AMD FreeSync support, and a $499 price point, and HP has provided a well-equipped and compelling product. If you're a pro who needs better Adobe RGB coverage, then the HP NV27 probably won't cut it for you. But honestly, you're not the target market for this $499 panel. Consumers, and possibly prosumers, for whom the sRGB is satisfactory, will find a lot to like with this panel's features and performance and it comes highly recommended from the WSGF.